The doctor came in and he said, Mr. Hogan, are you aware you are legally blind? He gave me a letter that said, you are legally blind. And I said, well, what am I gonna do with this letter? He says, I don't know. And during my research, we connected my hearing loss also it related to my vision impairment, which it made it more devastating because now you are legally deaf and blind. I enlisted in the Navy in April 1969. First time I really noticed it, my night blindness when I went out on night patrol. If you lit a cigarette, I can put a bullet between your eyes. But if you didn't do that, I would not be able to see you. I didn't want to say anything because I was afraid if I did, I might be medically discharged and that was not accepted. I met Jim the first time at my sister's wedding and he was one of the groomsmen and I was one of the bridesmaids and we just kind of, oh okay, I knew it was uh, Jesse's brother and uh, oh, good looking guy and I knew he was in the Navy. When I came home from uh, the service, uh, my brother reintroduced me to her and we went bowling. And we went bowling every Friday night and then go out for pizza. And one thing after another led where we are today. It wasn't until 1983 when his brother was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa with Usher's syndrome that his younger brother called and said, uh, you probably should have your eyes checked too, Jimmy. I think you might have what I have. So the doctor noticed that you, he tells me that I have RP and I shouldn't be working and I shouldn't be driving, but that's all he said. Everybody just kind of said, oh yeah, that's what you have, so uh, go home and do whatever. In 1999, when I had my eye check, um, I changed optometrist and the doctor came in and he had tears in his eyes and he did a lot of tests and he said, Mr. Hogan, are you aware you are legally blind? It completely to use the phrase blindsided us. When I first was told that you are legally blind and I was devastated that now I've been caught. We were just completely in shock. I guess maybe we'd been in a little bit of denial. Nobody would ever used the B word. He gave me a letter that said you are legally blind and I said well, what am I going to do with this letter? He said I don't know. Well, that letter turned out to be a very powerful tool in achieving the independence that I need to move on. We knew about guide dogs to begin with, and it took a while for Jim to warm up to the idea because we had a couple little dogs and a cat, and he couldn't see bringing another big dog into the family. My name is Bob Windler. I'm the director of canine operations here at Guide Dogs of the Desert. Matching process is something that's critical in making sure that we have a successful team once they leave here. And that starts through an interview process. Do they have dogs in their family? What are their daily activities like? We've got a pretty good understanding of, of the dog that we have trained. The first time I was in school going for 28 days training on the third day they had to go to our room and they were going to bring our dog in. Some people have a very strong preference for a particular breed of dog. Maybe they had a golden retriever when they were a kid and they feel that that's the best dog. Part of the art of being an instructor and matching somebody is being able to say you need to trust me. I want a black, black male lab when they interview me and just before they left I said bring it on, I'll take any dog. They came in with Atticut, and boy was he a joy. And he was a yellow male lab. When they graduate from the school here, they know how to come heel down, sit, stay, and stand as far as their obedience exercises. They're able to find elevators, escalators, cars, ramps, and their vocabulary gradually increases as they go home with their people. Atticus is part of our everyday life. He's just, we don't go anywhere without him. Leaving him home is just not in the program. Once he became partner and we understood each other, he was my shadow. He very rarely leaves Jim's side. He'd waiting for a command. He'd ready to be there. I get up in the morning to go to restroom at three in the morning. 
he's there. He gets up and he's there, waggling tail. Atticus gives Jim so much more of his independence back. Jim's free to go pretty much wherever he wants to and find his way on his own. He helps me to get where I need to go safely. My wife and I both understand I want my independence. I don't want to always depend on her to take me. So I learn how to use public transportation, figure out where I need to go, and then take Atticus and go. That give her her freedom and it give me my freedom. I've seen Atticus do things and exercise his intelligent disobedience to keep Jim from danger. Jim will give him a command to go off a curb. Atticus will see a car coming and literally block Jim from moving. He'll just turn him around. When I'm traveling, particularly downtown, I hold on that harness very tightly because if he makes a split decision, it, you, better, you better be going with him. I love Atticus with all my heart. For the things he does for me, we take care of each other because I, I have a hard time. Does he love me more or do I love him more? I, I can't tell you, there's no difference. We love each other. Hi, I'm the host of Ask a Vet. You're watching The Pet Collective Cares. Don't forget to subscribe.